What's up, you guys? I'm Robbie, that's Travis, and welcome to the new show, I Refine Movement Podcast. On this show, we're going to discuss relative topics to the tuning community and try to involve you guys as much as possible in the discussion. So on each episode, we're going to have three topics that we go over. The main big discussion for the day, then we're going to go into where we pull an Instagram post or a story that's been popular online this week. We're going to discuss it and we want your guys' opinion as well. Then the last segment, we're going to take comments or questions from our existing YouTube videos or any questions that you all have for us. We're going to go ahead and answer them here. Try to settle the debate. All right, so let's get into our first topic of the day. Travis, engine or suspension? What upgrades do you do first? That is the big question that seems to always be, um, I think, on our videos especially because Robbie and I have been focused very much on suspension since the beginning you know we have and my car started a year ago really on YouTube you know having a lot of videos come out and I did a lot of mods to the suspension and Rob's done stuff on his EK Civic and now he has this EG track car that he is doing we're starting in the same way with suspension first so obviously it's very apparent what we prefer to do and rob and i kind of agree on this because especially i think with with hondas you know and the money that goes into an engine swap or a turbo which a lot of guys are like throw a turbo on it and it'll be quicker yeah it'll be fast of course it'll be fast i mean in a straight line in a straight line but you know, you have a focus on track driving, mm -hmm. right? Right. Is like so is that why you're that's why you're doing suspension first. Exactly. Right? I think, you know, we're thinking about circuit road course, road course racing. So um yes. and time attack. So obviously an, an engine that's gonna affect our times at time attack, but sure. But I think us being beginners uh in the racing scene it's definitely, I think, a learning, a huge learning curve to try to just learn how to drive a car at the limit. That's a very good point you bring up there, man. And, you know, I totally agree. And to be honest, I was very surprised. Like, when we started doing these videos and we're putting up the suspension, like, to me, that's a very big and powerful upgrade in terms of, you know, how the car feels, how it's going to handle, and that is going to affect how you drive it. But I was very surprised to see like a lot of people coming up with comments saying like, oh, just do the engine. Like, what are you doing? Like wheels, tires, like those are cool, but do the engine or put a turbo on it or, you know, B swap, K swap. Like, you know, ever like how many people tell you to do an engine swap? That would be amazing. <laughs> Sure. So I would love, and it's not like we don't think about doing engine stuff because right. it's it's obviously very cool to do that stuff. Yeah, it is. And, but the thing is, is that the car, if you were to just throw a powerful engine or a turbo on these cars and go out there stock, you know, the car is going to be overwhelmed. And you're, you're going to overdrive your tires. Right. You're going to overdrive the tires and you're going to not be on the track anymore. You're going to be in the sand. You're going to be <laughs> in, the in the wall. Sand, in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just not going to work out the way people think. Because, But the Honda community especially is so engine swap crazy. Yes. Yeah. You know that. That's the thing for a Honda. Mm -hmm. If you're buying a Honda, that's the first question almost is what's the swap? What engine are you going to put in that car? Because obviously, I mean, especially in the Civics, they didn't come, at least with the 90s Civics, they didn't really come with engines that had all that much power, especially in the US market. Not the ones that are affordable to most guys who are maybe this is your first car or maybe this is your track car, your project, yeah. your budget car. Like, yeah, they came with the D-Series, 100 horsepower. This highlights a bigger point in my mind in that we have a specific focus. Like you and I, we are focused on circuit driving. And I think it's fair to say that we both realize, saying to you guys, the YouTube audience here, we realize that not everyone is into circuit driving. Probably the majority of the people who watch this page, I don't even want to categorize it like that, but a lot of people who are into the Honda community will be into it for the street scene of it. Like, they want to look good driving to work. 
They want to have a powerful engine that they can go from red light to red light and weave traffic or whatever with people. Like, they just want to have more power for the street. In that sense, I get it. Like, they want that engine and maybe having, you know, our triple eight R's or the BF Goodrich, you know, awesome tires. Like maybe that's not the first thing on their mind because it's not as relevant to them. They want that power from a roll. For us with circuit driving and what I want you guys, you know, to understand more is that it's all about the handling when you first get into your car for circuit driving, in my opinion anyway. Like, you have to be able to turn that thing left and right and feel confident in it. And it needs to be able to stick the road. Like Travis said, if you got more power and you're coming into this corner, you know, you're gonna have to slow down so much more. And it's gonna be even harder to slow down if your tires can't keep up, the brakes can't keep up, the suspension is all wobbly. Like, it's just a totally different mindset building a car from street or track. You know, I've had my EK Civic for 10 years and I was like, I'm gonna do coilovers because I wanted my car to be low, you know, and I want it to look cool. What happened is it switched in my brain when we did that is the car reacted. It was amazing how, how different it handled with just a set of street coilovers. Street coilovers. And that's with the 10K front springs and 5K rear springs right. that aren't even suited for the track, but I, I totally remember that. Both of us were like, oh my God, this car has been transformed. Right, it comes alive with just that model load and I didn't even have like sticky tires, like by all seasons, you know, <laughs> right. like. Those were all seasons. I remember you bought those Kumo Exta all seasons, very first, like it was a performance all season, but still, still an all, season, all season. It was a good tire, but yeah, it, it awoke something in me that, you know, it's that thrill of racing when you can take a turn really fast and the car does it. It doesn't want to wash out or understeer or just, you know, tip and you're off. You know, it just goes. And it, I think it's a, it's a great feeling to, to dominate a corner in that way. I agree, man. That, that was well said. Dominate the corner. Like, and you have to have that confidence going into that corner. And don't get us wrong, you guys. Like, like Travis said earlier, we want to do more power we want power upgrades and that will be coming in its due time but for us for now it really makes sense to optimize the handling of the car and be confident with your car on these circuit courses so engine power will be coming we don't know when that is you know we but we want it like <laughs> realize we that want we it. want that <laughs> yeah we want that we do but in our minds, for circuit driving, it's suspension, wheels, and tires first. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge, those things alone transform the car. Moving on to the next topic. This is a post that we found on Facebook that we found super intriguing, and we want to get your guys' input as well. So this here is a $15,000 Civic EM1 with less than 10,000 miles on it. Look at how immaculate this car is. Travis, <laughs> would you buy this car? This is very, very intriguing. I found this on NWP for life the fall of last year when Rob was looking for his EG and I was like looking for cars for him and this came up and I was like, holy crap. When, <laughs> when you see the, these pictures, obviously we don't have too many, but the interior and the engine bay, like, oh my gosh, this is the car I have. I mean, it's not the ESI version, but a Civic EK that's this good looking. I mean, and this perfect, you know, a lot of Civics, almost all Civics we run into have been modified for yeah, one. Right. It is really hard to find one that has not been touched. Right. So this one, it has, it has no modifications. Apparently someone bought it and parked it in a barn. I think it really, I don't remember the mileage, but I'm pretty sure it was around maybe even less than 5,000 miles on this car. Oh, God. Like it was parked <laughs> in a barn and it was left there and this guy has it. It's sold now, so don't ask. But, you know, he was asking 15,000 and... 
and a lot of guys were like, whoa, 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 like this isn't even worth that on Kelly Blue Books. Yeah, what was it, like 5,000 on Cle Kelly Blue Books? Maybe, yeah, maybe six, like something like that because of the age, but you know, it has, so, it has no miles. But would I buy it? It's hard to say because if I had the money and you know, it's such a special car. It's a special car and <laughs> I get it, man. I get it. It's it's kind of not black and white like that. Like mm -hmm. it's really hard to say. Like, you know, a lot of guys were debating, you know, this isn't worth that. But the thing is is like price of a car is worth so what someone will pay for it. And I I'm almost sure that someone bought that car for that price because they've always wanted this car and they didn't have it or they didn't get it in this condition and you know they found this and they bought it. I guarantee you someone did. So I think a car is worth whatever someone will pay for it. But yeah, I mean it's freaking awesome. I wish I had a I wish my Civic looked this good. <laughs> yeah, it looked this good. <laughs> So Travis sent this to me, you guys. Like I was looking for the EG at the time, like he said, and uh, you know he sent this to me. And I'm like, what? You want me to buy this? <laughs> I mean, it would be crazy, right? But so when I sit down and think about this, like, yes, it is a beautiful car, and it is an original car, and it is a special car, like Trav said. Like this Civic Si. I don't know, for me anyway, when I still think of Civic SIs, this is the one that I'm like, wow, this this got me into the Honda tuning kind of thing. Like this car, that just what it stands for, right? So this one in particular is beautiful. I mean, look at it. The paint is immaculate. Look inside that engine bay. Like it is just, it is from the factory, you guys. And like Trav said, it may have less than 5,000 miles on the thing. Would I buy it? Um... You know, man, again, it's so freaking hard. Like, I'm just my, like, thinking of how I am right now, I would have to say no. Because when I see that, I think, well, 15000 I could build one hell of a race car for $15,000. Uh, that EG would be like on world time attack level. <laughs> I mean, you know, like yeah. it would just be way crazier and happening way faster than what it, the progress currently is. That's true. Um, yeah, I understand. I mean, being in it right now, if if to buy that, it would be it, it, right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it either because of what you could use that money in our for. cars. You know, right? Our cars would be done. I mean, yeah. they'd be they'd be done. Um, but yeah, so 15,000, I mean, that is a lot of money. Um, it is also less than what that car came out for originally. It was probably what a $20,000 car, 22,000 yeah. mm -hmm. from the factory. So yeah, it's, you know, it, it probably is worth what he's asking for it. In my opinion, um, if I was just like a collector or something, or I just wanted, I don't know, maybe I wasn't into like the tuning community as much or into track racing. I just wanted a really nice, solid daily driver. Who knows? I mean, who knows? Like, yeah, it's an older car, but I mean, look at it. It's freaking brand new still. And I can speak to this a little bit because when I bought my Civic EK, it had 24,000 miles on it. And here, six years later, I'm still driving the thing and I've had no major problems. So, you know, I feel that this car probably is just going to keep on running. It's going to be fine. Um, $15,000, yeah, you could pretty much go out and buy a brand new baseline Civic for that, like, and it'd be brand new, or you get this SI. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it really is a toss-up, man. I would say just personally, no, I wouldn't buy it for that price, but I would also feel like a total dick asking him to lower it. Or, or lowballing him and saying, hey, I'll give you 5000 for it because that's what Kelly Blue Book says. I'm more respectful than that. I feel that would be disrespecting this guy because like what Travis said, it, the car is worth it to whoever's going to be buying it. You know, if you have the right buyer, that's what the price is. So, yeah. What do you guys think? We want to know. Go ahead and put down in the comments, would you buy this car for $15,000. OO Civic SI EM1, well, probably less than 5,000 miles. Would you buy this car for $15,000?
That brings us to the final segment of this episode, YouTube comments or questions from you guys. So as you know, Travis and I have both recently unveiled wheels and tires for our project cars. We are super happy and excited about them and to show you guys and we love all the love that you guys have showed us about our choices. So thank you. It's very cool. Uh, we love showing you guys that kind of stuff. But so anyway, we have gotten some good questions and comments based off of those things. And Trav, one of those comments from RG911, he asks, any issues with the 225 rubbing on the rear trailing arm? Um, I was concerned uh, about rubbing when I got the tires uh, and the wheels. I got the Koenig uh, Hypergram uh, 15 by 7.5 wheels and the offset, shoot, I forgot it. <laughs> I think the offset- Isn't it plus 35? I think it's plus 35. I'm pretty sure. Um, and with the seven and a half wheel and the, I got 225 BF Goodrich tires. Everything fits, everything, it works well. Uh, I drove it probably about an hour total so far with those on, I'm still doing a lot of mods, but there hasn't been any rubbing um, of the trailing arm. There's clearance of the trailing arm and everything. About how much would you say? How much clearance? I'd have to check to be honest. I'd say it has probably, I can definitely stick my hand in between the two, the trailing arm and the wheel. Like um, your, my, your hand like or my, your? Like my full, your finger, my fingers, I guess, my finger yeah. width. Um. <laughs> so, so maybe like half an inch or less. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely. I, I'm comfortable with it. I don't think there's any issues. So, um, I rolled the fender, so that was that was gonna be a problem for me, and and that was it. I think it should be fine. I just got to get the suspension all back together to really see how the car is gonna be at the track. Right. That's really good, man. Yeah, I'm really happy that you don't have to mess with spacers or nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, I was worried because we, you know, we already have a lot of problems with these cars anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> got lots of stuff going on. So, yeah. But well, and that's going to be a topic in an upcoming episode upgrades leading to more problems. Upgrade. Yeah, mo, mo upgrades, mo problems. <laughs> mo upgrades, mo problems. We can uh, have a, a rap album dedicated to that. <laughs> yeah, we could. It would be terrible, but it would be Yeah, good. it would be terrible. <laughs> um, so I have a question for Rob about his wheels that, and tires that he just got. Um, it's from Elliot438BCFC. Uh, he says, wheels look mint, go all out on performance tires. Hopefully you can fit some 205s on that. Should be plenty of width. Remember, wider tires add weight. There's a reason most Honda guys stick to 195 or 205. So that's very, I'd say that's very uh, specific. Um, yeah. So, so what do you say about that, Rob? So I wonder, uh, Elliot was the name? Yes. Elliot, like, uh, do you do track driving? Like, is um, have you done a lot of track driving? I wonder. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your question, man. And uh, thank you for the compliment on the wheels. Um, yeah, you know, as you have seen by now, if you've watched the video, I did choose a 225 tire. I got the Toyo R888Rs and a 225 5015. And yeah, I, like, I totally get your point, Elliot, I do. Like, it does add weight um, compared to like a 205 or a 195. Um, for me, I chose that tire. Well, I chose the R888R because I've been reading great things about it first off. So I just really wanted to try that tire. But the size, I don't know, for me, it's kind of like more grip, more better. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's such a thing as too much grip. And like, I get that maybe it can induce some understeer and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. Um, I own a set of 205s. And on a 15 by 8 wheel, it does stretch inward a little bit. And so that isn't optimal for the sidewall stiffness. Like the tire isn't going to react as totally as it was designed to on a 15 by 8 wheel. And with the 225s, they sit perfectly over the 15 by 8. In fact, it's even got just a tiny little bit of bubble to it. Um, it does have that 50 sidewall. And I know probably a lot of people are like, oh, why didn't you get 225 45s? Well, to be honest, I was looking for 225 45s to begin with, but Toyo makes R888R only in the 225 50. 
I am not a tire designer nor manufacturer. They are. <laughs> they did that for a reason. So that's what I went with, you guys. Like, I think it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, you have your own opinions on whether it's too fat, this or that, Coda. <laughs> whether it's too fat or not. Um, I think it's totally fine. I think it looks fantastic. But to address the weight issue, the 225... 5015s on my 15 by 8 949s only weighed three pounds more than the Steely, the 14 by 4 Steely with a 175 width 65 sidewall tire. Only three pounds more. That's per wheel. So I gained a total of 12 pounds, but I have 50 millimeters more per corner and i don't know for me that was a no-brainer man like obviously i didn't know that going into it beforehand when i bought them but i knew the 949s were light and so they could accept a tire that maybe has a little bit more weight to it a little more rotational mass but i don't know i am totally happy with that choice and cannot wait to get out on track with it um elliot i totally respect your opinion man 205s that works for you that's great like that's that's really cool i own 205s as well i think it's awesome um but again i, I want more grip and 225s for me was the way to go all right so i did want to ask are you having any issues with your wheels and tires fitting or rubbing or anything like that uh, yeah no thankfully not like uh, when I revealed my wheel episode, I was wondering if I was going to have to run spacers. And fortunately, no. I would say it's pretty much fitting exactly how yours is fitting, Trav, where I can put my pinky in there. Um, it's tight, don't get me wrong. Like the rear wheel against the rear trailing arm, it's tight, but it's got plenty of clearance. And I have taken many different turns at different speeds and I haven't had any issues with that rubbing yet. Um, I do have some issues rubbing up front, um, but that's because of my spring and uh, shock combo. It's being so old right now. And when I turn, you know, it leans a lot. And uh, yeah, it, it scrapes the fender a bit. So I get that addressed. But overall, no, the, the tires are fitting perfect. So that's going to be this episode. What did you all think? Please let us know. Comment below uh, on any of these subjects that you saw us talking about today. We have a bunch more shows like this getting ready to come up. I really hope you all give us a chance. Let us try to build this up. We want to involve you guys as much as possible in this show. Get to talking with you more. Please ask, ask us your questions, give us your comments, whatever it is. And we want to thank you sincerely for watching this. Uh, Trev, you have anything to say? Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have, we have um, ongoing build threads of Rob's car, my car, and those are every Monday. So, and, but this, with this new show, I want to, I want to let you guys, let us know what you think of this. Do you want us to keep doing this? What do you want to, what do you want us to talk about? Yeah. You know, do you have stuff that you have questions about or, uh, you know, we want to know so we can give you guys more content. And um, we got stickers over at refine-movement.com. I'll put a link in the description. And thanks for watching, guys. Well, this I Refine Movement logo that you see on this episode, we would like to make that into a sticker. And uh, if you guys are interested in that, it'd probably be the same price, five bucks. Um, nice big sticker, vinyl. Um, that'll be our newest sticker design coming out. So again, thank you very much, you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know what you think. Subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you in the comments.